Hi, it's Kim Pollock with Delicata House and this is our second week of the series Steps to Seasonal Wellness. I'm gonna be doing this at least through the fall and then I might start a new series, who knows. But um, last week we opened it up with talking about morning routines and I shared my uh, journey because I just started Ayurveda school and there really there's a strong emphasis on getting up before the sun, which is a little bit you know ah to me because I am a night owl um, and am just I'm trying to transition and I have noticed though that the days that I do get up um, before the sun and have some time to med meditate or pray, or journal, um, work out, any of those things, and then. I have you know maybe one or two hours before everybody else gets up it feels so great and um, I feel like I've accomplished a lot and I've taken care of myself and then I have a lot more to give to everybody else and so you know we, we shared last week that September is a time that's a little bit like January where it's starting over and so if you've kind of let some things slide over the summer and you you know would like to pick some of your habits back up or start something new now's a good time you know everybody's focused on work and school and and um, you know things just feel a little more structured right now so it's a great time to start new habits or restart them so for me I'm working on um, on morning routines and this past week's been about half the time I've gotten up before the sun and then you know a few of the days I've gotten up like right when the sun's coming up or right after but the days that I've done the before the sun feel better and I've gotten um, I've just had a lot more done you know before everybody else gets up and it feels good good to me so today I want to focus on the art of attentiveness or the habit of attention as Charlotte Mason, who was my homeschooling mentor, she lived in the 1800s, early 1900s, she called it the habit of attention. And some people call it mindfulness. And this is what I wanna focus on a little bit today. Um, it's something I've been learning about. So I wanted to share and um, you know, you might think like, what does this even have to do with wellness? Um, and that's a good question because I might not have known what the answer to that was, you know, maybe a month ago or so. But I've been learning about paying attention. Um, I started taking a class um, for HSPs or highly sensitive people. Uh, I'm one. And I, this past year, I've just wanted to really get a grip on my emotions and how I handle daily life. Um, I tend to get stressed out really easily. I get tired really easily and um, then I can like, you know, get frustrated and lose my temper or um, start crying really easily. And, you know, the rest of the world's probably like, well, what, what, what just happened? <laughs> and, and I'm like, ah, you know. And so I, I heard about this class and I signed up through the Shift Network. The class, in case you want to look it up, it's called Seven Steps to Embody the Gifts of Your Sensitivity. It's a long, um, long mouthful of words, but that it's a great class. It's a seven week class. And um, the instructor, Julie, is a, a therapist and she's really, really kind and is an HSP herself, so she really knows um, sensitive people. Anyway, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out the, the, the like how to work with uh, my trait and how to work with the strengths and weaknesses that I have and the sensitivity that I have. And rather than just being overwhelmed with emotion and um, learning how to conserve my energy and replenish my energy and how to ask for what I need. And um, so it's crazy that it's taken me till I'm, you know, 43. My Our birthday, Alan, Alan and I turned 43 last, well, I turned 43 last week and um, he's a few years older, but we, you know, it's crazy that for me, it took me this long to figure, start to learn how to handle what's going on inside, you know, and how to deal with my emotion and how to deal with stress and 
but I'm so glad I found this class. But anyway, I wanted to share a little bit of what I've been learning um, with you and talk about being attentive. So the first, the first place to start, you know, I feel it probably universal is always with you, with yourself. So you st I start with me and I am learning to pay attention to myself. And, and this is not necessarily what I learned growing up. I grew up in a great Christian community, but it's, um, the focus was very strongly on service to others, which I believe in wholeheartedly. Um, but there wasn't a lot of talk about what you need to do to take care of, you know, be, be compassionate and be you know, caring toward yourself as well. So, you know, even Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. There's some self-love implied there. Um, so the first thing that Julie taught us was that we need to ask ourselves, what do I need? And, you know, maybe when you take a break to go to the bathroom, get up from your chair or, or, or whatever, um, and you have a moment, ask yourself, what do I need right now? And do that a few times, you know, during the day. And it might be, I need, um, I need to sit down for a few minutes. I've been, you know, running around all day, or I need a drink of water, or I need to breathe a little bit. I'm, I'm feeling like really stressed, or I need a snack, or, you know, um, I need to step outside and get some fresh air. But to focus on what's happening inside of you. Um, and that has helped me because instead of just going and going and going and not paying attention to that stuff, and then I'm like in meltdown mode, um, you know, I'm yelling, I'm crying and being ridiculous, you know, and it's not anybody else's fault but mine because people will ask me for things. And if I don't say, you know, the other thing you need to ask is, um, what do I even have that to give to them? Do, do I have that to give? And if you do, then you can go ahead and give it. And if, but if you're in a depleted state, you're tired, you're stressed, whatever, that may not be the best time to give because then you're going to be resentful, right? You're going to be, um, you know, negative and, and there's a lot of resentment that people that are sensitive can have toward other people. And it's not the other people's fault. It's your own fault for not knowing your own needs and knowing your own limits. So it's just kind of being aware and paying attention to yourself and what's happening. And then after that, you can start paying attention to others. And by that, I mean to focus on the positive qualities in other people. Um, for someone like me, I can focus on, I can like notice everything. So I'm, I tend to be like have a perfectionist mind and I have to, I'm working on that. I'm aware that that's a weakness and I'm working on that. Um, but I can like notice, oh, they, she didn't do that and he didn't do this. And you know, why, why did they do that? And in my head, you know, I may not say it, but I'm thinking those things and not all the time. So if you're my friend, don't be thinking like, oh, she doesn't think negative things about me all day. No, I don't. I really don't. But I, I just, I can notice like about myself, I'm like nitpicking things about me and oh, I didn't, you know, do that quite right. And so that's when I'm, when I'm really in a bad place, I'm doing that kind of stuff. But when I'm in a healthy place and I'm taking care of myself, then I can be more gracious and generous toward others. And I can choose to focus on the positive. I can choose to be like, wow, you know, Alan came in last night and I was working and he's like, I would love to make you dinner tonight. You know, I don't know what you want. Like what a sweetheart, you know? So I don't have, I can focus on like, he's generous and he's kind and he's caring and he's patient and you know, he wants to help me. And, um, and then you can say those things to the person and you can tell them the things you love about them because that makes them feel appreciated. It encourages them. And it also reinforces in your mind and your, you know, in, inside like, yeah, this person is really amazing and I love them. And this is, these are the things I love about them. So get into the practice um, of telling your loved ones, your friends, the things that you love about them, the things you appreciate and that you notice and take time to notice. So when you're sitting down with your partner or spouse or child, you know, at the table, really look at their face and, and, and look at their body language and notice their gestures and, um, and tell them, you know, just take the time to savor and appreciate um, who they really are. Um, so I think that in, in order to, um, to do that, you do, you have to first spend, you know, know, know yourself enough and take time for you and pay attention to what's happening inside of you. And then when you feel cared for, then you can care for others and you can, um, be gracious and kind and notice how amazing 
the people in your life are because they, they are, you know. And um, then thirdly, we need to pay attention and connect with nature. And I think we all know this and some of us are better than this at this than others. Some of us are, um, you know, just outdoors all the time. I'm thinking of my friend Maggie. She loves to be outside and, um, you know, then some of us are, you know, we'll just, you know, beaver away at our desk for hours or whatever else we're doing and not get outside unless we like take a moment and go, yeah, that's right. I need to get outside. I didn't get outside today. And when you do, you step out of your doors and your walls and you feel the sun on your face or the wind, you know, um, blowing through your hair and you feel, um, you, you know, you, you smell like maybe fresh cut grass or this tang in the air of maybe like, uh, you know, gr wild grapes or apples on a tree. Um, you hear different kinds of birds singing and you start to ask yourself, what do I hear and what do I see and what do I smell and, and what's different? You know, what have I not noticed? Um, even if it's your backyard that you've been in, maybe you've lived it somewhere for, you know, 20 years, but like get outside and like look at some, look at things in a different way. Maybe crouch down or, you know, just look at things from a different angle and take the time to appreciate nature and, um, it will, do your like everything will just feel just uplifted and way better um there are lots of studies you can look up about why we need to get outside be with trees and it makes us more creative it makes us um just better people really if we're outside um and this is the the thing for me that i learned that i'm learning i can't say i've learned it already i'm learning um, that I need to slow down. And Alan has been telling me this for a long time. And I was always on the inside resisting him because I'm like, I have too much to do. I, you know, I don't have time to slow down. I have to keep working. I have so much going on. But during the first week of the HSP class that I'm taking, um, the teacher said, HSPs need slow mornings and you shouldn't just jump out of bed and work and, you know, rush around and do a million things. You need to get up slowly, you know, maybe even take a little time before you get out of bed to, um, you know, think of some positive things, but get up and meditate and take a little time maybe to journal um, before you begin, you know, the, the, the running around because that will set the tone for your day. And so, of course, um, she talked about meditation and I know I mentioned it last week as part of your morning um, routine, but if you don't meditate, you know, you don't have to be of any spiritual belief to meditate. It's just as simple as closing your eyes and focusing on your breathing. And for me, it helps to count. So like to have even breath. So maybe I'll count like one, two, three, four, and then four, three, two, one. Like if I do something like that, some people can count, you know, six or eight, however big your breaths are. But the point is that that will focus you um, on your breath rather than just letting your mind scatter, which mine will certainly do as soon as it's allowed to. So that is a practice that um, I just started about a month and a half ago, but it is helpful for um, getting you to pay attention more and getting you to focus more and be more aware of what's happening inside of you. And then, you know, and then you can focus on what's happening outside of you. Um, so I do encourage that because it does really set the whole, yeah, the whole tone for the rest of your day. Um, and then I just wanted to mention a couple of books about attentiveness and, um, the first one that you can, you know, you can look these up on my blog, lifeofkim.com. I wrote the post, which is about, you know, what we talked about today, uh, about attentiveness. So you can look up these books there. Um, the Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. Um, the it's called Lost in Wonder: Rediscovering the Spiritual Art of Attentiveness by Esther DeWall, and then a poetry book, of course, um, Thirst by Mary Oliver. And Mary Oliver, I she passed away earlier this year, and it was so sad because I love her poetry, and she has meant so much to me because she's always talking about noticing what's get outside and notice what's happening all around you and you know in in nature and it is so healing and so soothing and it helps you to be more of a complete person really to be outside 
um, with among the trees and the birds and um, the fields and so if you live in the city I encourage you to at least find a, a park near you that you could walk around in um, that would be that would be great but if you live out here in the country like I do it's not hard to walk around among trees and fields and birds I'm pretty pretty uh, fortunate so those are the books and then um, because I am an aromatherapist of course I'm going to give you an aromatherapy blend that th in this case it's good for focusing and for cultivating attentiveness so um, you would put these drops into a diffuser and then fill to the fill line with distilled water and then diffuse for an hour or two um, one drop of cardamom two drops of cedar wood and three drops of lemon those are all bright and energy like energetic and will help you um to focus and uh, to pay more attention to what's happening around you so you could you know put it in the family room um so you when you spend time with your family or you could you could certainly use it while you're working um, or when you're taking time for yourself for meditation or journaling or whatever um so that's my my notes on attentiveness and a little bit of my journey and what I'm learning. I would love to hear how your morning routine is going, how what are your wellness habits for this fall, what kind of things you would like to learn about, because um, if there's certain topics that you would like to hear um, discussed here that you would like to know more about, I would be happy to um, to hear from you and then be able to share um, that with you here. So you can email me at delicatahouse at gmail.com or you can DM me or um, how else? Yeah, those are probably the best ways. You can also um, sign up for my um, sign up for my blog, which is at lifeofkim.com. And um, if you want to subscribe to that, then you'll get this post every Wednesday in addition to other posts that I write. So I look forward to seeing you back here next week at 1.30. And I look forward to hearing from you.